I'm very thankful that I grew up in a home and community where it was important to do the right thing, to do your duty, to honor your parents, and to show honor for others. Then my training in the military reinforced those teachings as the focus on accountability for behaviors and performance got even stronger. It was an environment where excuses were not welcome. Today, the culture doesn't seem quite the same. Honor is under attack at every turn, and we must consciously engage in a battle to guard our character. We see people justifying all sorts of dishonorable behaviors and ignoring or making excuses for the bad behaviors of those with whom they align on a particular issue. When winning at the expense of truth takes over, it's followed immediately by the ends justifies the means mentality. We experienced this firsthand with the communists and the POW camps. They told us that truth was that which most benefited the party. Are we at that state in our country? I hope not. That's a recipe for chaos and then tyranny. Honor and truth are crucial to our culture and survival as a free society, but it takes more than good intentions. As trite as it sounds, we need both a carrot and a stick. The carrot comes from our deepest desires, our strongest sources of energy, the sources of our purest motives. But you can see how the drive to succeed in meeting some of our ambitions and surface desires might get distorted and cause us to rationalize dishonorable behaviors. The truth is that the enemy of honor is within each one of us. Every person is capable of dishonorable behavior. That includes you and me. Andrew Carnegie, the famous industrialist of the 19th century, put it this way, all honor's wounds are self-inflicted. That's why correcting back must be a way of life. We're going to make mistakes. Of course, the goal is to see them coming and make better choices. But when we get off track, we need to recognize it and correct back quickly. Like flying formation, early recognition allows us to make small corrections before we get far out of position. At work, at home, or in our communities, we need to set the example. As a leader battling for honor, your influence is going to be critical. People are watching you. So decide on your non-negotiables and then be accountable to live by them. Accountability is your friend. It's the guardian companion of honor. Make your commitment to honor and then invite others to hold you accountable to give you feedback when you get off track. It's difficult to get clarity about honor, so we have developed a basic honor code. It's just seven principles that everyone agrees with, but when you reflect on them, you know it will not be easy to live up to them. I encourage you to get a copy of this honor code at leadingwithhonor.com and use it as a guideline to battle for your honor. It's a battle that's well worth fighting, and your authentic example of struggling with honor will inspire others to do the same. Thank you for joining me and so many others who have made a commitment to engage with honor.